Why do you have the house and inheritance all to yourself? My brother, whom I had not heard from for five years, suddenly showed up at my mother's funeral and started ranting. He had abandoned our mother five years earlier when she needed care and had disappeared. I was absolutely mortified, but my son opened his mouth as all the relatives stared. As a result, my brother was avoided by my relatives. My name is Maddie Joan and I am 48 years old. Ten years ago, my husband committed adultery and went straight to divorce, and I left home with my then eight-year-old son, Hayden. There was alimony and child support, so I then became a licensed nurse and now live happily with Hayden who is now 18 years old. He is a much older man now, but at the time he was eight years old and still very much in need of my help. I live in what is called a regional city, and Hayden attends a public university in the area. My parents' house was also a 15-minute drive away, so I visited them often, but I was concerned about my mother's recent health problems. Then one day, I received a phone call from my brother Thomas, who lives with my mother. I went to our mother's hospital today. She's going to have surgery. He said. My mother has always hated hospitals. I had always tried to persuade her to go to the hospital whenever she felt unwell, but she had always adamantly refused. My mother was like that. Thomas. Take me to the hospital. She said that the pain in her lower abdomen was quite severe. My mother was in so much pain that she could no longer walk. Thomas immediately took her to the hospital, but the doctor said. Why did you leave it until it got this bad? He was furious with her. Some of her internal organs were necrotic, and an X-ray showed that she might have osteosarcoma in her pelvis. He said that if she were a normal person, the pain would be unbearable. My mother had been going to the orthopedist regularly for her stiff shoulders and had a lot of pain medication. She was taking those painkillers every day to cover up the pain, and the doctors were apparently dismayed. My mother is 76 years old. For some reason, some people this age don't like hospitals, and I work as a nurse, and I see rather a lot of such patients. I had been paying attention to her, but I had not considered that she had been fooling around with pain meds. Hayden and I both rushed to the hospital, but my mother was in surgery and I couldn't see her, and I didn't feel comfortable until the surgery was over. The surgery was a success, but the strain of the pelvic surgery was still too much for her and she ended up in a wheelchair. We were waiting for the test results to see if she had cancer, but a few days later the results came back and it turned out that her body was cancerous. Since it had not metastasized to that extent yet, it was decided that she would continue to have regular visits to the hospital for tests and to discuss treatment options. After a month in the hospital, my mother returned home, but a few days later, from Thomas. I need you to take care of mom with me. I can't do this alone. I was torn, and so was Hayden. Mom, I'm sure grandma would feel more comfortable if you cared for her too. I can commute to college from the grandma's house, and we can go. So, I was told, so I decided to move out of the apartment in Hayden and I would live at my parents' house. Maddie. I'm sorry to bother you. My mother was apologetic, but she also said she felt safer with me as a nurse by her side. Really, I'm glad you're here. It's still a lot of work to take care of her. I couldn't have done it alone. And Thomas was happy too. My father had been dead for more than 10 years, but my parents had a rather large house, probably because he had had a rather good job. My father's retirement benefits had paid out quite a bit, as well as the insurance money from when he died, so my mother and brother were well off. The family home had been remodeled several times, so the family home looked comfortable. There were many rooms, so Hayden had his own room, which he was happy about. 
I was taking a sigh of relief after cleaning up the move when Thomas came in smiling. I, I have a dream. You take care of the rest. He said. I said. What? What do you mean? He was about to leave the house with a carry-on case that he had originally prepared. What do you mean? I asked Thomas in a panic as he was leaving. What do I mean? I have a dream, and I asked you to take care of mom. I was stunned, and he quickly got into a cab that was waiting for him. A dream. What does he mean? I could not understand the current situation at all. My brother had always lived a depraved life, never holding down a regular job, but working part-time to make ends meet. If he had a bad day, he would immediately quit his job and never step out of the house in a huff. Perhaps it was because he could live comfortably at home, but he lived off the backs of his parents. So when my mother needed nursing care, I took it for granted that he would take care of her. However, as a daughter, I decided to do what I could to help her and decided to live at home. It never occurred to me that he was going to throw the entire responsibility of caring for my mother on me, but when I thought about it, I should have considered that he was my brother, and he might do it. Well, no matter how much, he would be home in a month or so. I gave up and decided to take care of my mother on my own. I had a job, so I asked a friend who was a care manager to help me with home care and day care services, and I made it as easy as possible for my mother to spend time with me. My brother did not return after a month. On the contrary, I later found out that he had done something terrible. I tried to call him several times, but he seemed to have blocked all incoming calls and never answered any of them. I thought about quitting my job once, but that was no longer possible, so I told my employer what had happened and asked them to change my hours to a shorter shift. Hayden helped me with my reduced income and supported the household by working part-time. Hayden actively helped me with caregiving when he was free from college, which was really helpful. My mother said she was sorry. I am lucky. Thank you for everything. And she was always grateful to us. When she was in good health, we would go on trips, even to nearby places, and when the weather was nice, we would go for walks in her wheelchair. She had cancer, so she was in and out of the hospital during that time, but five years after I moved back home. She passed away after a long battle with the disease. Hayden and I were very sad, but we had done everything we could for her, and most importantly, we had made many memories and had no regrets. She was a well-liked person and many relatives and friends came to her funeral before she died. While I was talking with the people who came to the funeral, Thomas showed up there for the first time in five years. As soon as he saw me, Hey, Maddie, what is this all about? My lawyer told me. Dot why is the entire inheritance yours? You cheated my mother. He started yelling at me. The relatives and my mother's friends looked at us to see what was going on, but they all looked at me coldly as Thomas talked about me like I was a criminal. This man. I thought he had not shown up in a long time. What is he saying? I was too angry to say anything, and Hayden, who was there, opened his mouth. Uncle, it's been five years. How was your trip around the world, throwing your mother in charge of taking care of my grandmother, taking all her money and going? Did you have fun? When did you come back? You must have been very busy to show up after grandma passed away. Hayden said, raising his voice. Thomas froze when he heard that. That's right. Thomas had left me in charge of my mother's care and had absconded with her bank book. We didn't find out until a month after he was gone, and by then my mother's savings account was worth zero. Her savings account book contained my father's retirement and insurance money, so it must have been quite a bit. Knowing this, 
I decided to quit my job once and for all to concentrate on caring for her. But I couldn't do that either. And our family had a really hard time for a while. Thomas, did you spend all of your mother's savings? She was in real trouble because you took all the money she had saved. How dare you come here today so brazenly? I told him clearly so that everyone could hear. In fact, I knew where my brother had been after that, from what I had heard from acquaintances. One day, a few months after he was gone, a mutual acquaintance of his and I showed me my brother's social network. There I saw a picture of Thomas having a grand time in Las Vegas, and I felt my gut churn. I told my mother that he was also spending a lot of money abroad. I'm giving up that money. I've decided to consider Thomas an early inheritance. I'll give you all the rest of my inheritance. And then she called a lawyer and prepared the documents for that. My mother, in addition to the money, had stocks and land, and she made sure that I could inherit her home as well. And she also had expensive insurance policies, so she made the arrangements so that I could have all of that as well. Some of the stocks were sold a little when she had trouble making ends meet, but she still had a sizable inheritance. She did not play hardball until just before she passed away and tried to leave it for our future. I had once told my mother that I was going to sell my shares to quit my job so that I could focus on caring for her. Don't throw away your career for me. If you quit my job, you won't be able to go back to it in the future. Even if you have the money, you should keep the job that you think is your life's purpose. I can pay for the home care and daycare services, so you should continue working as long as it is not a burden on you. My mother said. My mother knew that I really loved my job as a nurse. I could not forgive Thomas for betraying her kindness and abandoning my mother as soon as she needed care. When Thomas told me and Hayden about all the wrongdoings he had done in front of his relatives and acquaintances, he turned pale. But, well, that's all a lie you and your son are telling me to frame me. That's right. Dot now that my mother is dead, you can say whatever you want because you don't know the truth. You're such a liar and how he turned the tables on me. Even though our positions were completely reversed, he countered with a lie. Besides, it's against the law for the entire inheritance to be yours. He is still saying. Thomas had played around and spent all his savings, apparently. An acquaintance had confirmed this to me on social networking sites, and since his life was gradually becoming poorer and poorer, I was thinking that he had somehow run out of money. I didn't look at his social networking sites because they made me angry, but I was interested to hear about his life from time to time from acquaintances. He had been back in town for the past few months thinking it was time to ask my mother for some money, but he didn't want me to get mad at him, so he was laying low. Thomas had always been a hard-headed person, posting everything on social media, and he had also been caught living in a cheap apartment. When I saw a picture of him with the title, I'm tired of living in luxury, so I decided to live in poverty, I was disgusted. How did you know the date and place of your mother's funeral when you never showed up until now? I asked. I saw it in the newspaper. I only put it in the local newspaper. I knew he was nearby. Uncle. I thought you were still overseas and didn't know about grandma's funeral. Huh? But the newspaper with the schedule of the funeral was only distributed to people in this area. Could it be that you lived around here? Then why didn't you come to visit her? Why did you wait until grandma passed away? Why? And Hayden started asking a lot of questions. I was skunked and laughed a little, because Hayden had said everything I wanted to say. No. So I've been living here in town, but I've been pretty busy. I went to visit him when you guys didn't know. It was about a week ago. He lied, still not giving up. Well, do you know which hospital your mother was in? I asked. That one, right? 
The hospital where you work. Thomas was getting sloppy. Then, without a pause, Hayden says. Oh, Grandma died at home in her last days. She hadn't been to the hospital in a month, Mom. Hayden, he was pretty angry, so I'm going to push him all the way. You guys are out of character. What's the fun in screwing me over? And he got angry again. That's enough. I said loudly. It's your thing, anyway. You were planning to take advantage of the many relatives at the funeral, weren't you? And you were going to take my inheritance away from me. But the world is not that easy. I said, and he couldn't say any more, as if I had hit the nail on the head. Didn't you plan to ask your relatives to introduce you to a job? I know a lot of our mother's relatives are in business. You've never had a real job, and now that you're in your mid-fifties, no one will hire you, right? I said more, and he sat down, heaving this time. Hey, how did you even know that? I said it in the right way, but he got the picture. That sucks. He seemed quite shocked that I had found out everything and couldn't talk anymore. Uncle, I'm 23 years old and in my second year of working, and I'm going to take a lesson from you as a lesson against you. Hayden tooted. None of the relatives took Thomas's side. And he apparently turned to several relatives after that, but they avoided him. He had been playing around for five years, and it seems that most of the time when he tried to work, he was dropped on his resume. He was 54 years old, had no regular job, and seemed to be living off part-time work every day. I was inherited from my mother, and I am still working as a nurse. My job allows me to interact with people from all walks of life, and being told thank you is what makes my life worth living. Thomas was so busy chewing on his parents' backs that he will probably spend the rest of his life without knowing the joys of such work. I believe that people who think only of themselves will never reach true happiness, even if they can afford luxuries. What did you think of this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.